so today I'm doing a blowout look showing you the difference in two different tools. So half my head right now is styled using the Dyson Airwrap, which is very expensive as we know. So half my head right now was styled using the Dyson Airwrap. The other half of my head was styled using this Hot Tools round brush. Big difference in price here, 500 over $500 compared to about $50 for the Hot Tools brush. So I'm curious if you can tell which is which. Comment down below what you think I used on each side. This video is not gonna be a review on the Dyson because I have a super comprehensive review after testing this for five months with all my thoughts, if I think it's worth it, the price point, just going through literally everything about the Dyson. Check out that video first. I show you using it in different ways. I talk about how it holds for me, what products I like using with the Dyson, all that kind of stuff. So definitely check out that video if you're new here. Everything I'm using today is listed down below in the description box if you wanna check anything out. I always list my makeup down there as well. But let's get into it and compare these two guys. Here we go. Okay, so my hair's been air drying for maybe about half hour it's definitely still very damp especially in the back and anytime I blow dry my hair I usually don't like to do it just straight from wet hair because for me that just creates more frizz it creates more damage because you're drying it longer and whatnot and if you have the time just while you're like doing your makeup I just feel like it's better to let it air dry a little so I've been loving this stuff this is the bedhead after party smoothing cream especially when you're wearing your hair straight and you want that really like smooth sleek look this stuff rocks and I got this for 10 bucks on Amazon. So I will link it down below, link everything down below, but I'm just using about that much. Mostly focusing this on the like here down. So my hair is thick, I have a lot of hair. It doesn't naturally air dry straight. Like I definitely have a wave to it. I can wear my hair curly by scrunching it and putting in curly products. Typically with just a straight blow dryer and a brush, there's no way I could wear my hair out like that. Like it just looks crazy. So for me, Brushes like the Hot Tools one have been a total game changer. You'll see when I do my hair with that brush, I don't have to use a straightener at all. It gets my hair like sleek, it gives the blowout look. My hair type is not one that will typically get like smooth and sleek and good looking from just a blow dryer. Next, I like to add in about four or five sprays of this. This stuff is great. It's a 10 in one primer, heat protectant primer, has argan oil, sunflower seed oil, it smells amazing and it just makes my hair so again, like silky, shiny. You can use it on dry hair, but if you do it on dry hair, you just wanna do like a spritz or two or even put it in your hand because you don't want it to look too oily. It smells incredible if you've ever smelled the Amika dry shampoo. Oh my God, it smells like that. So good, it smells like amber. So this one, I definitely just keep on here down, not on the top because I don't wanna add too much oil on the top. My hair doesn't get super oily. Like I can go literally five days without washing my hair six days even sometimes. So since I'm doing half half, I am just gonna take my brush, this is for me myself, brush out my hair and then split it in half so that we can do side by side here. I'm gonna do hot tools on this side, Dyson on this side. I don't want this side to get too dry. My hair usually doesn't get fully dry by just chilling, but I don't want it to get like completely dry before we do the Dyson, so I'm just putting in in a really attractive button there. Okay, this makes me think of, um, remember Xenon the Zequel? That is looking fantastic. So as you can see, especially the back of my hair is still very damp. If you've been wanting to get one of these brushes, I've tried the Revlon one and I just find that this one, for some reason, I don't know what the difference is, why this one works better for me, but it just makes my hair significantly smoother and more sleek looking than the Revlon one. I have been using this for, it's definitely been at least a year now, and I haven't found that this is damaging to my hair whatsoever. This has been the only tool that I brought with me traveling along with my flat iron. Like I haven't been bringing the Dyson. And my hair is super healthy, shiny. I haven't found that this damages my hair. The Revlon, if you use that one too much, I don't know if the heat is just high or what, but that one a lot of people do get damaged with. Let me know your experience if you've tried this one and the Revlon or just this one, but personally, I don't find that this damages my hair. So for me, sometimes I'll section off my hair, sometimes I won't. It just kind of depends how wet my hair is and like what I'm feeling that day. So today I'm just gonna section off like the very top just to kind of get my bangs out of the way in that top layer. Clip is from Target, so cute, it's gold. So you control this tool down at the bottom. There's a cool low and a high setting. I use the high setting if I'm going in with damp hair. If I'm like touching it up, it holds really well for me. But if I do wanna just touch up like the front pieces or something, I'll usually go on the low setting if my hair isn't damp, just so I'm not like total frying it off. But the key to using this brush is going both directions on the hair. So you just wanna basically leave out the ends when you're going the opposite direction than you want it. So you have to figure out, first of all, if you want your ends to flip out like this, 
or under like this. Typically under gives more of that blowout look. That's what I like. So because I want to end going this direction with my hair curling under like this, I'm going to first start going the opposite direction, especially on the top, like really giving resistance and going like this. And this tool is great because you can give resistance on the tool itself, whereas you'll see with the Dyson what you have to do. But with this, because it's a round brush, you can just twist it and this creates resistance. So basically I'm just pulling down and twisting. You can tell the ends are going the opposite direction what I want right now. So I'm not gonna leave the ends on too long when I'm just like smoothing the top. So I just kind of switch directions like this, switch directions, obviously it's not on right now. I'm just showing you the motions first before we go in, switch directions. And then usually I do that, I don't know, maybe like four or five times and on the end to get that blowout look, I just twist a few times, keep twisting and then let it go and it'll give you this really pretty curved in, smooth blowout kind of look. So that's what I'm gonna do on this half of my head. If there's any areas where I feel like they need more drying, like I said, I'll just continue to kind of smooth down the top. This is just so freaking good at giving that sleek look. So let's just do it. I forgot that Parker hates the blow dryer, so he's freaking out out there as I'm doing this. Typically with this one, I'll do like a first go at my whole head and then touch up the front pieces and that's what gives it like the super sleek look at the end. And I kind of go all directions with this one. So especially you want to make sure your roots are dry or else you're just going to get frizziness and some like wave at your roots. So because of that, instead of going just, I guess, horizontal with the brush and curling this way, I do like to turn it vertical like this and then really get in the root and twist this way. You just want to make sure whatever direction you're ending off with is the inward turn so that that's the final like shape that the hair holds. And as far as the pieces that I am grabbing, I grab like pretty big sections. I don't find that you have to work in small areas with this. That's probably why I can do my whole head super fast with this. Like I can do my whole head from damp to dry in usually about 15 minutes, like pure sleek, really soft, good to go kind of look, don't need to do anything else. So this is just what I like to do for the back. I'll almost just brush it down like a normal brush and that just creates that smoothness. It's gonna help with frizz and also just quickly dry your roots and then I'll go in and style it and do the turning and stuff. So now with the back pieces, I'm gonna to continue to grab sections. It's just a little bit harder of an angle. And by the way, if you have upper body issues, I find that the weight of this is fine for me. It doesn't feel too heavy. It was like definitely a little bit harder right after I had neck surgery, so just FYI, it's hard to maneuver some angles, but with this thing, because you don't need to be holding two different things, you can almost just do it with one hand if you really had to. Okay, so my hair is now fully dry, super soft. Now I'm gonna go in with the top layer and then we'll switch to the Dyson. Because you are brushing out your hair with this thing and you need it to not be tangly, just make sure you're brushing out your hair first with the normal brush, or if your hair is super tangly, you know, make sure you do your normal detangling process. My hair doesn't tangle badly, so luckily I can just brush it out. I need to put in some root spray afterwards. I like to leave the bangs out. I love how this makes your bangs look. Oh my God, it's like the best bang look I can get is with this tool where it just gives you those really pretty like curved, it looks like you just got back from dry bar kind of look. I will show you how I do that. I like to do the bangs last. So you can see how friggin beautiful. Love this thing. I should reiterate, I only am doing the ends on the very last pass because I don't wanna, you know, give more heat damage to my ends than I need to. Doing the last back piece here. So for the bangs and then the front piece, this is what I do. I feel like the difference between this and just using a flat iron, this looks so much better because it looks like it's styled versus just like stick straight. So for the bangs, I actually like to go not curved down. I like to flip out the other way because that's what gives that like wispy, blown out kind of look. Don't drink every time I say blow out, but you could. I'm gonna do the same thing where I first wanna go the opposite direction. So I'm gonna go this way under because that's not the way I wanna end up just to smooth it. And then I'm actually gonna flip this way and go away from my face and hold it up. Don't hold it to the side, hold it above your head on the top. And I'm gonna continue to turn like this and then it's gonna give a nice wispy look. So this is like unreal for my hair type to get this kind of look with a blow dryer. This Orbe hair oil, absolutely love. It's a nourishing hair oil gold lust. Smells amazing, works great, it's lightweight, but it still is an oil. So I just like to use a really small amount. And for me, an oil really helps with like the front pieces. Cause as you can see, that's where I get like a little bit of frizz. Add shine, controls the frizz a little bit more. 
and whatever's left over I'm just running down all of it but if your hair gets super greasy maybe don't put it up there. Now we're gonna do the Dyson on this side. So I do have a spray bottle of water here if I do need to dampen it at all. Still, still damp. This should be perfect actually. Because again, I don't like doing it on total damp hair, total wet hair. Okay, Parker wanted to come inside. Hello. Can you gonna lick my lotion off? Already going out. Okay, goodbye, sir. Time for the Dyson. So I'm gonna remove the curl attachment that's on right now. Theoretically, there are four different attachments that you can use to achieve like a straight blowout kind of look. So the first is just the blow dryer attachment. So this is basically just gonna blow dry your hair. This attachment isn't as powerful as if you just have the Dyson blow dryer. If you have thinner hair that blow dries really well, this will probably work great for you along with this attachment. For me, these are my two least favorite attachments just because for my hair type, they don't work well. And for me, this just creates more frizz on my hair. And then we have the two firm smoothing brushes. These are very similar. They basically just have different bristles at the end. Sorry if you see some hair in there. It is a hair tool, but these are kind of like, I feel like they could have just done one. They're very similar, but I do love the firm smoothing brush for smoothing down frizz on the top of my hair. That's like one of the ways I, I do really like to use a Dyson is I do feel like this attachment really helps with frizz on the top of my hair. Like no matter how I'm styling it, I do really like this attachment. But again, keep in mind, the tool is $500. So I've tried these tools like together on their own in different ways to see what the best way I can get that sleek blowout look is. For me, for just like overall straight hair, this one works the best out of any of them, but I will show you, you know, what it looks like. And then I'm gonna use this for the ends of my hair to try to replicate this side to get the nice curved under blowout look that I can achieve with one tool on this side. So the best way to use this I've found is again, create resistance. So the same kind of thing that I did with the hot tools where I'm creating resistance by turning the tool itself so basically I just want the hair to be like tight against whatever tool I'm using so that it really gets in there and it's pulling the hair against itself, not tugging, but just like, you know, a nice gentle pull to create resistance. So because this doesn't have anything to pull against, if that makes sense, like basically it's just this one side. So you could kind of like go against your head like I do with the other tool. But the best way I found is to do basically the same thing that I do with the hot tools where I'm going down and then up but i'm pulling my hair against this to create the resistance as it's going down i do still like to start the same way as the hot tools where first i'm just brushing to smooth down the frizz on the top if your hair is super wet you'd want to go in with this first just to dry it a little bit and again i go all the way up on all the levels for this because the roots are mostly dry now not all the way dry but mostly now i'm going to create the resistance that's like the the theme of the video today. You're not gonna see the really like curved under ends because obviously this is like a flat brush. There's no curve to it. I am kind of wrapping it at the edges, but it's not gonna curve as much as if you use like this attachment, which I will do at the end. So I don't know if you can fully tell, but there's significantly more frizz when I use this tool. that annoys me with the Dyson is that the air just like flies out so even as I'm like trying to smooth down this side it's like pushing the air over to the other side of my head and creating more like frizz at the top okay it's like what <laughs> a half hour into this video and I just realized I thought there was something on my camera lens and I realized the mirror is dirty so um let me try and clean that oh there we go okay to be honest I really think that this product helps because I actually have not seen it this straight before with the Dyson. It does have more volume because it's just, you know, poofier, but the texture of it is definitely more frizzy than this side, not as like sleek looking so far. But like I said, we're not done yet. Look how fast my hair freaking curls. I do want that blowout look on the end. You can see that it's just kind of like straight on the end and I do still have like frizziness throughout. So I just want to try and get it as sleek looking as this side is. So I'm going to use a round brush attachment to attempt to round brush the ends here. I 
I've definitely been doing this side for longer and I'm not done yet and it's also making me significantly hotter. Just FYI, I'm like starting to sweat. We are getting some curve on the bottom here, but I don't know if you could see as I was doing that, but because of the air on this one, it just creates more frizz because the air is like pushing upwards. You have more volume on this side and I do this with the hot tools too, but kind of help it around, like wrap it once just so it holds easier and then you can use this motion and like turn your wrist as it's wrapping because it's just harder if you're going like this it's hard to get it to kind of wrap around on its own also because of the size of this obviously the round brush is significantly smaller than the hot tools so you do get more of like a curled under look a little bit because it is smaller what you're wrapping around i'm gonna do the same thing on this side that i did with the hot tools so you can see the difference with the bangs Ooh, okay i'm literally sweating by the way I don't use the cold setting on the Dyson unless I'm doing the curls because I just find that it's so time consuming to like wait there and do the cold and I feel like it doesn't make that much of a difference for me on my hair when I do it straight. Okay, so here's what we're working with on this side. I think it's just like a different look, you know? It's not as like straight sleek. I am going to use the final attachment, the firm smoothing brush. This is different than the pink one that I used all over and use this for just the top to help with some of like the frizz throughout. And this one I am going to put on one lower setting. Okay, to be honest, I'm a little shocked right now because I've never gotten it to look this good, the Dyson side, literally never. So I attribute that all to this product because that's the only thing I'm changing. So if you have issues with getting a smooth straight look with the Dyson, maybe try out that bed head thing because honestly I really think it made a difference. As you can see, I still have like pieces that don't look super smooth, but I definitely have more volume on this side. So kind of just difference in preference, whatever you prefer. But personally, I like the hot tool side better because I like my hair to be more sleek, but I do like the volume. It looks nice and like thick and it still looks healthy. Sorry, let me put in the oil so we can get a true side by side with the product in. So let me know what you think. Which side do you like better, the Dyson side or the Hot Tools side? I'm gonna have everything I used today and talked about listed down below in the description box. Let me know if you guys wanna see other Dyson videos, either comparing it to cheaper products or just more videos styling my hair using the Dyson. I just feel like for me, for the ease, time, and price, I just, I don't know, I just don't think you can like beat this. If you like more volume, you're probably gonna like this side more. Just like the time that it takes on this side of switching out the tools, using different tools. I can't achieve this look with just one of the Dyson tools. Like I said, the round brush for me, frizz nation. Like if I just go in with this, total frizz doesn't smooth well. So in order to get this look, I do feel like I need to use all the tools that I use today. So if you're someone who wears your hair straight frequently, you don't think you're gonna be using the curl attachments on the Dyson a whole lot, and you just want something that gives you that blowout look, I think you could save $450 or more than that with all the extra things and taxes and all that, I think you could save the $450 and get this bad boy instead. I'm adding this in at the very end so this isn't going to be in the intro clip that you're seeing because I just wanted you to see the two tools on their own. But one thing I love using when I use the hot tools or just flat iron my hair, whatever, is a living proof full dry volume blast. This stuff is so good at like legit adding volume. So I like to just kind of like hold my hair up like this and spray it from far away in the ends you want to let it like dry down because i feel like if you just go in and rough it around it's not as good just like give it a few seconds let it dry down and then i just kind of like fluff it on the ends and then i actually really like using this on my roots a little bit it doesn't create like a gross tacky thing or like dirty feeling on your hair after you just wash it because obviously i just washed my hair i hate when products give you that like tackiness so i just spray some in and then just like rub it through like you're rubbing in dry shampoo and if you don't like the like flat to your head kind of look, you want more volume. This product is awesome for that and it really does add some volume. So now you can see this side versus this side. They look, now they look pretty similar as far as the volume. So you can still get the volume with the hot tools by just adding in a product like this. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, you can give it a thumbs up. I'll have my last Dyson video linked down below in the description box. I also have an Instagram reel using the Dyson. I think of two, so any other Dyson content I'll link down below as well. But I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video.